Hello, welcome everybody. I'm delighted you could join us today for this presentation by Trend Vision um, of the Trend Book 2021 Plus. Uh, this is in partnership with Harper's Bazaar China and Shenzhen Jewelry Museum. Um, we're about to show you a, a very brief video and then I'll get into some introductions and we'll have the presentation. So uh, let's see the video now. So uh, I'm joined today by Helen Mao, who is a senior jewellery specialist uh, based in China, and by Paola De Luca, who is creative director for Trend Vision, uh, which is part of Vicenza Oro, a unit of the IEG, the Italian Exhibition Group. Um, I'd first like to introduce Helen. Uh, Helen um, is a consultant for the jewellery industry uh, based in Shanghai. Uh, she worked before that for many years for the World Gold Council. Um, I'd just like to, to introduce Helen, and Helen will uh, make a brief introduction uh, to the Chinese audience joining us today. Helen. Hello, everybody, and thank you, David. Thank you, Bola, for your invitation. 好,那我下面用中文跟大家来问好,谢谢所有今天加入我们线上分享会的各位嘉宾,希望你们可以在今天的分享会上获得更多的关于2021年设计潮流的资讯,那我是Helen,我是今天的邀请的嘉宾,我
analysis, creative, uh, creative session, design, product development, and so on. So it's interesting to analyze today what was said and forecasted and projected then and what happened after post-COVID, or at least during still the COVID-19. So let's immediately jump into our presentation. And uh, let me see if I can go live. Okay, before uh, Bala download the PPT, I can uh, I can help to translate what you are general introduction. Yeah, uh, Bala, 刚才说了那个，就是今天很高兴可以在线上跟大家分享两零二一年的设计潮流的那个内容。其实这个部分的内容呢，我们是每一年提早十八个月发布的，所以这个发布其实在两零一九年的九月份就已经在全球发布了。但是今天我们有机会是可以把我们做的调研。做的分析，以及对产品开发那些有帮助的那个概念，可以分享给到大家。所以今天也是因为是全球的这个疫情的关系，我们选择了线上和大家来分享。OK， 宝拉 ，It's your turn now。Paolo will be just with us in a minute. We're just、uh, sorting out some technical matters. The fun of、uh, the new normal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. thank you, David, for addressing the new normal. Yes, it is the new normal, and today we've been having some problems actually. But let's do let let's do it this way, okay? So here we are, I guess, I hope.、Uh, so today we're presenting forecast season 2021. Can you see well? Can you?、See? Yep. We're just waiting for the、um, presentation to emerge. Sorry, I mean I don't know. What... Yeah, so I suggest maybe we can have the chat room. We can say hello to everybody. So I try first. Yeah, so I just try the chat room. Yeah, hello. Yeah, okay. So for the Chinese audience, you can send the Chinese version. Say hello, 大家好 Okay. Can you see this? Is it okay? Yes. Right. yes. So, guys, we having some technical problem. We didn't have it until now. Here we are. Okay. Great. All good. So fast. Okay. So. This is, I think, this is, is、um, again. Sorry for the, you know, the, the new normal, like David said. But I think that in the forecast index, we have the most important macro theme, which are like related to what we're living. The first two important, let's say,、uh, aspects are the title of this、uh, macro theme, which are really reflecting consumer sentiment, most important social cultural shifting. Let's look at artivism and digital dharma. Now, what happened just last year before even post-COVID?、Uh, Greta Thunberg, born in 2003, she started a very strong movement about climate change, and that was just one of the, you know, most loud, you know, let's say,、um, you know, protest together with many other movements of civil rights movements. Me Too movements and and very important political turmoil around the, the world. So arts designers, architect artists, really started really implementing these important points in their you know、um, arts. So that's why we have identified artivism as a very important movement. In the arts, and therefore in jewelry and the luxury world. So this is a very important note before we enter the con the context of the jewelry industry. How activism was very important already last year. So even before post COVID, climate change, environmental issues,、um, responsible and and and、um, practices,、um, it was very very important. Um, the other important highlight is what we call digital dharma, just stressing the point of 
a spiritual approach to life. That was very interesting then, so we are talking about 2019, with, with COVID-19 and post-COVID, we were forced in lockdown for three months. We were forced to be, to, to pause, to have a time lapse and reconsider our life. So we have, we are in, we have already envisioned a slow acceleration in terms of speed in a way of action, but the paradox and that also paradoxism it's one of the emerging trends we are focusing for season 2022. It's kind of the paradox of lockdown have accelerated digitization, and therefore we are viewing life and our business completely in a new different way. So the paradox is by slowing down, we went faster. So these two important elements, activism, and Dharma translated into the spiritual sense are the most important element of society right now. When we get into the tales of tale and ancient wisdom, despite the naming of, or whatever, tales of tales translate the need for escapism and daydreaming of human being. We cannot live without dreaming and ambition for the future of our lives. At the same time, ancient wisdom is translating utopia. Utopia in the sense of a utopistic vision of the present and the future going back, starting from our roots. So those are very important macro sentiment that we were like, we have identified already last year and let's see how they are relevant still today despite COVID. OK， 啊、呃，我下面跟大家那个简短的翻译一下，包拉女士呢跟大家有分享，就是在2021年的整个的潮流的啊、呃、研究当中，我们先要去看一看这个大环境里面会发生什么。其实特别是在2019年开始，其实全球在这个之前的这个几年，有过很多种不同的运动，比如说那个我们说气候变暖，比如说我们说要那个 Me Too 的那个就是女性。的力量的那个运动，所有这一些都是通过艺术家，通过我们的那个设计师加入了这个行啊行列。他们希望通过他们的一个积极的行动来换取大家的关注。所以在这个部分啊，包拉女士的团队觉得这个非常重要，它会影响我们整个的一个社会的改变。那么数码法则呢，其实也是这个大环境下带来的。我们已经完全生活在一个啊、呃、电子化的世界，所以我们啊、呃、线上的生活让我们好像变得很快的节奏，但是其实我们还是会回归我们生活的本质。那么在数码的时代，我们所有人最近刚刚感受到，就是当我们的疫情来临的时候，我们被所有被要求是在家居家隔离的时候，我们网络。赖于生存的环境，让我们可以持续往下走下去。所以呢，这个团队最后研究的说，不仅仅2021年，可能2022年之后有一个很长的时间，我们对网络的依赖或者网络的加速发展，这是一个已经不可抵挡的一个趋势了。那么这两个方向之外呢，其实还有就是我们在很多的都市里面，有很多的造梦者，他们希望可以寻找到过去。现在将来的好的生活，他们一直在积极的寻找真正的生活方式，所以在这里呢，也可以回归到过去所有啊，我们的古老的历史当中留下来的文化历史的那些智慧，它会指引着我们当下的现代人，继续的把我们的生活进行下去，并进行的越来越好。所以在包拉的团队经过研究之后呢。他们得出了这四个方向，一个就是啊艺术的行动派，一个就是数码法则，另外一个就是故事里的传说，还有就是古老的智慧。Thanks, Bala. Thank you, Ellen. Now, I, I think it was important to stress this first part because it was like kind of really the, the, the point of the entire session. It's like very often people is asking, how can you forecast much ahead? Because it's very difficult to how could have, we have a, you know uh, you know 
planned, you know, a pandemic, a global pandemic event. We couldn't. Um, but what's very important is to see how we have already started a big cultural shifting from like the previous, I would say, two years. And now this is already it's happening. So in a way, the crisis started earlier. And COVID-19, it became almost the peak of the crisis and the breakthrough. So the breakthrough is making it as, a, as accelerated all these, let's say, provisions. And now we are facing in reality what's going to happen and how relevant all these topics will be for our lifestyle and, of course, for our businesses. So activism, it's really like I, I anticipated, it's really related to whatever is happening globally on a political and macroeconomic level. And in terms of product, uh, they, they, uh, Ellen, would you like to say a few notes about this? Okay, now we will用把它翻成中文的是就是艺术先行，在我们所有的政治啊、经济啊、大环境里面，如果我们有一些个人的声音，我们有一些自己的主张，其实艺术家是走在最前面的，所以艺术家是走在最前面的，所以艺术家是
，所以那个巴拉说到产品的那个形态里面，大家可以看到，他说有一种就是来自印度的古老的工艺，就是那个薄片的钻石。然后呢，我们看到珍珠也是这一部分的主要的那个元素。还有就是在产品的表面的肌理方面，你也可以看到它是有那个裂痕或者有断缺，所以这一切都表示。不完美，张东中呢显示了自然的力量。Okay, please, Bala. In this world of again artivism, there is this kind of evolution of deco, but it's becoming kind of more a, ge a color geometry or decometry, which is actually is kind of um, almost getting closer to the sixties. Um, it's like. Um, Uh, color blocking and contrasting, we are seeing a very strong, we are, it's already happening, use of malachite and minerals and, and color, um, and color blo blocking uh, stones with inclusion. So malachite, uh, tiger eye, lapis lazuli, uh, in combination with either enamel, and or faceted gemstones can be tone on tone or in contrast with diamonds. Yeah. 在这部分那个巴拉给我们展示的作品，其实是已经是非常明显的。比如说有包豪斯风格的建筑的风格，几何图形，还有就是非常的演变当中的 Art Deco 的风格。那么那些宝石呢，其实都不是啊大啊贵宝石，是半宝石，特别的半宝石，但是有着它独特的颜色，所以这些颜色非常的有冲击感。所以它们在一起的时候呢，组合在一起的时候，你会发现啊，它的颜色的有。视觉感，同时它的形状是带有几何图形，所以组成了一个非常有艺术感的作品。Now, still evolution, another very important、uh, direction is what we call messaging related to calligraphy, and also this this con this concept of speaking up, regardless of your message, it could be. A love message. It could be a religious message. It could be a political message.、Uh, some designers, like、uh, you know、uh, Nadine Kamso, for instance,、um, this designer here on the left side, she's right. She's creating jewelry with、uh, Arab calligraphy, and she's kind of you know you know her jewelry are made of like you know Arab graffiti. So it's it's kind of. There is also some kind of pride, you know, you know, the cultural pride, especially I would say is going to be stronger after COVID because of trying to help local economies, also appreciating more our local culture. There is kind of an attachment, a kind of a rediscovery of local roots and culture. So. Countries and 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 designers will be celebrating both their languages, culture, technique, craftsmanship, and therefore messaging、It、can be either literal or only techniques of craftsmanship. 好，呀呀，那个在这个部分里面，艺术家或者设计师，他们也大胆的运用了很多他们要就是表达出来的意愿。那怎么样才能表达呢？他们就去找回他们的文化的根，或者是一些在长期的在他们当地的文化中留存的那些符号啊、元素啊，甚至他们的书法体。可能那些的符号是带有啊特别的象征意义，也有可能是代表了一些政治的元素。但是不管怎么样，这些。作品组合在一起的时候，其实是一种用一种艺术的行为来表达自己的心声，所以它最终是会为让文化能够有一个进一步的发展。Okay, please, Bala. As evolution of what I、uh, basically I was talking about, really the, the concept of you know authenticity, craftsmanship, and history, but really the in this particular in terms of consumer sentiments, like being the utopia, meaning. Really dreaming about a present and a, diff and a better future. Especially, I think that you know the lockdown.、Uh, I, 
this is was something that was already happening. I mean, all the global issues that we were facing was already creating some radical shifting, uh, not only in the jewelry luxury industry, but in society. In the search of new civil rights and new values, um, you know, globalization has definitely created some unbalanced, you know, general unbalance. And in the search for what we were now we calling a new norm. So COVID-19 really kind of created kind of a, a, a separation, um, a, a, what we call the crack, you know, the crack and the crisis that really made devolution happen. And the ancient wisdom in the search of looking at our past for really having an introspective journey that is actually led us to today. So here we are. You want to say a few things? Uh, okay. So, Bala 女士提到，就是在我们整个文化的演变跟进程当中，其实有很多人是会去啊，为了让最后的生活更变得更好，他们就会去寻找过往历史当中的一些工艺呀、啊、特别的故事啊。但是在当下，特别在今年，因为有疫情的发生，所以就出现了一个新的迹象，我们叫啊，他提到的是 crack， 那就是有一些裂痕。那裂痕它有它。负面的地方，但是也有它正面的地方，好像照进了一丝阳光，所以这一丝阳光可以让我们有更多的机会去寻找更好的东西。Please, Bala. Now, this is a very important、uh, section, I think, because earlier, before we were talking with Ellen, and she was mentioning the importance of 24 karat gold in Chinese culture, but I would say that this actually, I would say in general, even we are seeing that from 2021 onward, meaning even in 2022, the 24 karat gold color, that might not be the 24 karat gold for the rest of the world, is popular, it's kind of, especially in this kind of category of product, which is not going to be the core of products, not going to be the classic, the, the, the everyday jewelry. But in the collector pieces, we are seeing that more 24 karat gold color will be more popular in association with black, for instance. There are some exquisite Indian desi contemporary designers that they are doing eight, uh, 24 karat gold with uh, black and gold as well and sliced diamonds. There is a combination of past and future combined, which is really incredible. So we are seeing the blossoming of incredible designers all over the world. And just to you know, kind of tie back you know, to China, China is working a lot with jade. They are relaunching jade as an important um, uh, element of their culture. And jade is becoming more popular also international. So we're going to be seeing more green, let's call it either jade, malachite, emerald, but green, it will be very popular as the color and it is already now. Go okay. ahead. 好，那我那个包拉刚才说他们在讨论这个古老的那个智慧的时候，其实他有问过我关于中国2 4 K 的那个黄金的发展。那其实2 4 K 不仅仅是中国的一个啊，现在被焕发起来的一个新的一个形象。其实，在全球，在接下来啊，比如印度，他们虽然做2 2 K， 但是他会把这个2 2 K 的颜色也做成就是古老的、带有皇室、带有这个尊贵的感觉。那么全球来说，还有。就是会受到中国，比如说我们也很喜欢的那个翡翠的那个呃作品。那翡翠的绿其实也代表了一个对过往的啊神啊神圣的那种向往，或者帝王将相的风范。那么在全球，除了中国有翡翠，在全球他们会有那个，比如说我们的祖母绿，还有就是孔雀石这样的绿的颜色的流行，其实也反映了我们对过往的那些尊贵的啊记忆的回复。Please, Bala. Well, in the scenario of、uh, this category, card gemstones, ancient techniques, we're going to be seeing more granulations, hammered surfaces,、uh, what we call archaeo gold, so archaeological inspired jewelry, everything that coins, and so everything that looks like some kind of、uh, relics. Uh, will be it's it was already 
has started to be popular, but it will be more and more popular. We have been, we were talking recently, actually, on Julia Outlook uh, with Christie's about, you know, Art Nouveau. Everything is, uh, let's say, collect, you know, um, it's so historical categories. Uh, it's, it's very, very popular. And we can see how the auction houses and, and David Broth is an expert on it. Um, they're really having a, a, a phenomenal time. 就是在这个部分，历史感的珠宝变得非常的重要啊！大家可以看到古币的产品的发啊、呃、现象，还有就是雕刻的珠宝，这一些都是带。古老的记忆啊，就是技能或者说记忆吧，工匠的记忆。所以现在我们愿意去啊复兴，愿意去传承，把这些古老的智慧凝聚的记忆能够表达，能够传承到现在，希望它也能延续到将来。所以大家看到这一系列的作品里面，还有很多的是代表了啊、呃，在历史发展当中它好的那个寓意的那个象征物、护身。符或者是它的一些特殊的印记，其实对我们的生活来说，我们是依托这样一件首饰，它可以让我们传承自己的一种信念。可以，那 in this in the world、uh, in this still in this category, but I would say across the board, all the element of spirituality, a holistic approach to life, talisman, amulet, uh, any any jewel. An、uh, object that can kind of project a sense of energy, protection,、um, inspire to universal again forces. That could be the sun. That could be the stars. But it doesn't matter what it is. All over the world, from China to North America to the South America, it doesn't matter. Everyone relates to it. So we've been seeing how、uh, all this sort of uh, again. Um, I would say more spiritual and holistic talismans, more than religious, are very popular and continue to be popular now more than ever. 好，包拉刚才有一点提醒到，就是说，其实啊，那些珠宝的设计当中，珠宝商设计当中用到了太阳，用到了星星。无论是中国还是一直到南美洲，可能它跟我们原先想象的宗教没有直接的关系，但这些符号我们一看就明白，它带有特别的力量，它带有它的神秘感。所以，珠宝商在或者我们的设计师在运用这些元素的时候，其实是表达了某种的心愿。所以，在这里。一个部分里面，我们是啊，就是焕发对过呃过往美好年代的向啊，就是啊致敬，也是为以前所有的啊匠人匠艺啊表达啊崇高的致敬。所以，我们希望把这个古老的智慧能够延续下来。Please, Bala. And now, now we're getting at the end of the day, we're getting to you know, consumer is like representation of the universe where everything seems so possible and where nature is worship. Uh, as you know, in its most authentic forms. Honestly, I mean, what can I say? I mean, it's like the daydreaming, constantly worshiping nature. I guess it's 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 a it's a it's a everlasting. I mean, it's like even though before, during, and after COVID, but now even more. I think nature gave us a very strong sign and made everybody aware of climate change, of you know, being. Sustainable and having what we call here a spiritual mindset. So everything is,、um, you know,、uh, it's connected, and、um, and I think that that's that that's the key for this following season and and oh and and for and even more. 好，那在这个潮流的方向里面，是关于那些我们一些故事的一些传奇，或者去诉说这些故事里的故事。其实是在全球有一个普遍的现象啊，在全球各个地方都有造梦者。那那些造梦者就是希望能够在啊传述过去、现在、将来的过程当中，可以延续那些特别的精髓的东西。所以在这个部分，大家可以看到，这是一个啊主要的一个全球化的一个。方向来的，我们希望把最最好的部分，那个造梦一样，就是把梦境当中的东西都能够延续下来。
Now, I, I wanted to just stay for one moment on this page, with the palette phase, a page, actually. And, and I wanted to see the, to show the contrast between the flower and the architecture. Um, I think this is a very important point of contrasting of cultures, where one is an Islam, it's the, a, a representation of Islamic uh, a, um, culture and represent. I'm sorry, Islamic nature represented in Islamic culture and nature. Uh, I think it, it is in the contrast that everything is evolving. So nature will always be there, but nature is being now uh, narrated with a different perspective. So it's very is a, a very important note. Two important things. There is one exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York which is opening in the fall, is opening in October, um, and it's like talking about the time in fashion. It's like exactly, the title is Fashion Duration, and it's making a parallelism between uh, different time and ages, and now different elements of designs are being reinterpreted. They are not copied, but reinterpreted, and evolved into the new dimension. So it is a mistake when sometimes people say everything comes back. Um, it's not really coming back. Rather, there is an evolution. So there are some design elements which are echoing similar emotion that they were kind of living that particular time in history. The early 19th and previous centuries, it's echoing similar um, turmoil that we are living now. Um, digital age has created uh, has created drastic changes, radical changes, and therefore new values. Um, globalization, digitization, the way we are living now is completely different than the previous century. So we cannot compare it. Um, we are morphing our vision, we are morphing our values, and we have reaction. So even the way we are viewing nature is different. Yeah,所以刚才那个包拉女士特别在那个一张图上停留,那你们可以看到花朵,因为说到花朵大家会觉得啊,它是自然的。啊,远古时代,到现在我们的生活,啊,方式可能改变了,我们穿的衣服可能改变了,啊,我们全球化的进程,我们的那个数码的进程,让我们的生活变得,啊,都有一些不一样,但是,核心的对自然的崇敬,
that is, is embraced by the object itself is even more important than material. That's why we have, it's like, we have recently presented this project, what is the future of diamonds? So even diamonds, together with the rest of precious material, they are located in a debate of, it's important how diamonds and precious material are used. It's not a matter of quantity, of carriage, or weight, but the design and the story around will be crucial. OK， 那我跟大家解释一下，刚才 Bola 就是也提到，其实在这个行业，比如佳士得的那个专家们写过一篇很好的文章，他说现在的那个设计，其实珠宝的设计已经不仅仅跟物质有关，那还是跟它有一些特别的故事有关。当然，我们现在的那些工艺。或者技术都有了改进，比如说最近非常流行的钛合金的技术，也运到高级珠宝的过程当中。但是无论它的材质、它的宝石是什么，最关键的，它背后的故事才是整个设计的灵魂。那说到啊，钻石啊，钻石的未来，我们可能不仅仅是它以前我们大家知道的四个标准，或者讲它有多大，最关键还是用钻石啊来设计来完成的作品，它有没有故事？还有现在，因为工业化的呃进行，所以我们大众化的产品可能是一个机器设备出来的。当然，我们也有手工的作品，这两部分共同组成了珠宝市场。但不管怎么样，就是我们的设计是为有故事的啊设计而去进行。好了，可以。Well, similar to Art Nouveau, uh, nature is celebrated in a very interesting way, and as you can see, titanium. Its protagonist in the last few years, I would say, two to three years in hot jewelry. So it's really diamonds or any other precious stones becomes kind of an enhancer rather than the main cut, main protagonist of the jewel. Um, what I think is interesting, I don't think is new, but is new in this season. It is used for like let's say for the for the large the distribution. Is the cell the, the the presentation of mixed match or like you know non matching collections? I mean earrings and and collection are sold individually rather than by pair. So in this particular case, we pay we have a pair of earrings that don't match, um, and very often right now, uh, earrings are sent they are sold individually because people might not necessarily buy them. By set, and they may create their own set. So this is very important. It's something that is responding to the need of the contemporary, uh, you know, consumer, to what is the need for individualism, as well because body jewelry and basically the piercing of the bodies or the use of jewelry all over the body change the nature of the object itself. If either gender fluid and so jewelry worn by men or women, you know that creates a different, um, uh, let's say, need for the for the object itself. 好，那我给大家解释一下，很快跟大家解释一下，在这一个那个方向里面，其实有一个混搭的艺术，就像钛合金可以跟钻石混搭，可以跟宝石混搭，所以宝石不再是放在最中心的那个大宝石，为宝石而设计，它是整个艺术作品的一部分。另外就是混搭的艺术，呃，我们在佩戴首饰的时候，不一定要成对的成套的佩戴，我们可以表现个人的魅力、个人的品味，可以随意的以一个来呈现。那另外一个混搭。就是男女产品的混搭，啊、呃，没有在绝对的说男性珠宝或者女性珠宝可能是男女都可以用的那些珠宝，所以这个混搭的那个艺术在设计中体现的越来越强烈了。Please, Bala. Now, uh, as you can see, um, and, and this one is again, I, I will go relatively fast because we we have another section, but uh, craftsmanship, um, the celebration and really the the, the of Uh, ancient and old techniques. So enameling and glass making and all this combination is is very interesting, and is being now more than ever rediscovered. So as you can see, vignettes uh, um, like even the uh, jewelry themselves, there are pieces to wear, um, and this is like you know all over the world, from Russia to China. 
from India to North America. I would say that collectors, uh, either they're buying original pieces from Art Nouveau or Art Deco or like, you know, or like, um, let's say, historical inspired pieces, there is really kind of a, 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 a search, a, a hunt for these pieces. 啊，灵感与那个历史的那些元素。那在这里有一个特别的工艺，比如说玻璃，呃，那个玻璃的，把加上那个就是珐琅的工艺。所以这些作品，其实现在我们看到的，无论从啊俄罗斯到中国，从那个印度到那个南美，其实这些作品它表现了当时古老的这种呃工艺的传承。所以这些作品就是一件艺术品，是很多的藏家他愿意去把它收藏，它可以既有新艺术风。风格的呃特征，又有 Art Deco 的特征，特征它是当代艺术首饰的极端的表现。好了，可以。Just to just to break the ice a little bit, I wish I could speak Chinese like you, of course. You know, it's like I think this is completely fascinating because we are having this is we are witnessing global age. Literally, we are. I mean, let's let's not you know hide around the bushes, people here. I mean, it's like. I am in Italy, in Tuscany. David Broth is in Hampshire, in, in England, near London. Uh, Helen Mao is in Shanghai live, and it's right now, it's 8.47 p.m. And we're talking live to the world. This is exciting, it's scary, it's fascinating, but it is 2020. I mean, it's the beginning of something that is completely unknown, and what I like, honestly, is that we are, as analysts, we are analyzing a report and looking at history. We're looking at the, master, at, at the, at the market and in the cultural shift, global cultural, cultural shifting in a way that in a way was already forecasted. Now, from theory to reality, it's like, how are we going to implement these changes? Uh, this is the most critical point. It's a point where companies have to become digital, and by digital mean how can we bring our activities from offline to online? And doesn't mean the offline will end. Is more thing emerging? I feel actually that Asia, more than other parts of the world, in particular China, that have already done this faster, this transition. They are already digital more than say central europe and maybe north america even though north america is stronger compared to you know central europe but still i mean how can we transit a retail business uh, of jewelry for instance online but entertaining our client the way we are doing now and sharing experiences that's the key point. The key word is experiential luxury. It's not about the material itself. It's not about the jewelry itself, but it's about how can we offer experiential luxury to our client and engage our audience the way I'm trying to do now. I mean, right now, honestly, I'm looking at the screen, like in the stock market, seeing how many people we are engaging by telling a story. It's incredible. Everything is about data, but data shifts based on the emotions. The more you get engaged, the more you are emotionally engaged, the more you're staying. 好，那我给大家啊、呃、简短的介绍，包拉那个所表述的。那今天是很一个美妙的夜晚，因为我们三个人来自不同的地方，我们居然在线上相会，然后我们给所有的今天在来自世界各地的朋友们去分享那个2021年的潮流。那这就是数码，这就是数字时代带给我们的有趣的地方。那啊，包、呃、拉刚才提到有一个词，我想给我们的啊、呃、那个中国的朋友有一个解释，他用到了一个 physical 加。
digital 就变成了啊 fidget e s t 那这个部分来说，就是一个融合。我们既是一个有线下，有一个线上，然后这一部分组成在一起 ，physical 加 digital 变成了一个新的生活的模式。我们既有物质的，也有精神的，然后我们也有线上线下的组合。所以这个部分来说，是这个时代给到我们一个很特别的一个改变。那么作为 transition 这个部门啊，这个呃、啊、项目，他们就是要调研研究，如果文化在演变当中，对我们每一个人、每一个生、每一个人所处的生活的环境会带来什么改变，从而会影响设计师、艺术家们他们在创作过程当中有什么改变。那么有一点就是很明显，现在我们对啊那个材料、对珠宝的材料这个部分，我们可能不是放在第一位，而是我们希望能够挖掘材料背后整一件作品。它表达的深深远的意义，这才是珠宝首饰的价值所在。Please, Paula. Well, this is a very important slide. Before this is our last session, and then、uh, maybe we'll be very fast in wrapping up because we are running out and we have questions. But basically, this is I think this I'm pretty scared to read this. You know, slide. It's like we're talking about sensory augmented rituals. Becoming the key element. We're talking about sharing experiences through augmented reality. I I just received the question last, you know, yesterday by someone saying, Paula, how what do you know here? How can we use augmented reality in jewelry online nowadays? I mean, we have to get it. What can we do? Did you create? We need to create digital connection that will elevate consumer experience. So this is the passage. And the secret here is like, look, spirituality. We have associated healing crystal, meaning holistic approach to to technology. Simulating like last year was like we were celebrating 100 years of like you know 50. I'm sorry, 50 years from the from man landing on the moon and was celebrated you know in the world and 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 this kind of fascination for the universe. For this, for space, for the unknown, is as a, re, a really inspired、uh, designers,、uh, artists,、uh, everybody, literature.、Um, but the, the interesting passage here is not just tech; it is is about spirituality and science. 嗯，好，那个包拉女士跟我们大家提到说，在这个时代最最关键的其实是一个呃奢华生活的一个体验。那什么叫做奢华生活的体验呢？我们如何来分享？其实就他举到，比如说我们在图片上看到的那些跟月月球有关的故事，跟那些治愈性的水晶的那些产品，其实这个在地啊数码时代，它已经可以帮助我们去实现。虽然我们在处在不同的城市、不同的环境当中，但是去年我们。庆祝了啊、呃，人类登月五十周年，所以我们对这些有啊，就啊外空间的那个想象，我们会有加注我们的那个想法，所以我们会把它变成我们日常生活当中。佩戴的珠宝的一部分，所以现在他就给到大家看到跟月亮、跟月球有关的那些设计了。好了 ，Please。So we are looking at the future, like the photo that we see here of the moon that was actually. Shot, you know, when they landed. This is a, a, an image that was landed to us from the Metropolitan Museum,、uh, you know,、uh, honoring, you know,、uh, last century、uh, moon landing. And then we are seeing here, like, you know, so a romantic、uh, vision of the moon.、Uh, at the same time, you know,、uh, jewelry, which are kind of inspired. It's a futuristic,、um, nostalgic element almost, but also kind of. You know, a little bit spiky, a little bit like punk, a little bit like you know, being on the edge. So from gender fluid, you know,、um, you know,、uh, um, piercing to studs, very cool, edgy、uh, design,、um, and and pave being also kind of organic,、um, inspired again to a future that is slightly romantic and nostalgic. 
我们刚才可以称这些珠宝是未来主义珠宝，因为它带我们有连接着月球带啊带着我们外星球的那些秘密，所以大家可以看到它平铺的那个镶嵌的钻石，可能是颜色有渐变，还有一些铆钉的做法，非常的酷。所以这就是我们说到啊，未来主义珠宝其实它带有。特别酷的造型也完成了我们对外空间、对未知世界的探索。Please, Bob. And last but not least, um, crystals, healing crystals, gemstones, and now more than ever. I mean, years ago, no one would ever imagine the 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 how you know colored gemstones would be so popular. It seemed that only diamonds were like you know the the the, the real value, uh, and they still are. But you know, important and they're there. But I would say that colored gemstones and they either they can be faceted, cut, or rough with inclusion. Uh, it seems that there is the perfection of the imperfection. We were talking many times with David uh, about this, from salt and pepper diamonds. To uh, you know, again, inclusion in stones, opals, and and minerals, and just rocks. They're being celebrated as you know, kind of healing, as cure for our souls. We are looking at stones as something precious, unique that can sometimes even cure our our soul again. And and it, this is, I would say, that holisticism. It's 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 an overall sentiment of society nowadays around the globe. 好，在这个部分给大家展示的那个呃呃珠宝的设计，其实大家可以看到的是它的那个特别的颜色，彩色宝石，也可以看到它的水晶。接下来会有更多各种不同的宝石组啊，半宝石组合在一起，包括和钻石在一起，它们有不完美的地方。它的切工也是用了最最原始的切工，但是就是用这种不完美表达了它的完美。它是一个全景，让你看到了它真正的本来的面貌。所以这就是未来珠宝的感觉。Now I would I, I I I end with this very quickly, but then I think we should you know you should wrap up, uh, Ellen, and then we go to Q and A. Uh, and last, I would say more you know the avant garde, even though it is you know appreci very much uh, inspiring. Of course, it's futuristic design, uh, getting it to the next level. Like I said, um, it's uh, it's design that is looking at the future. With a nostalgic approach,、uh, but this is very modern design, very spiky,、um, futuristic diamonds.、Um, as you can see here, we see Thomas Donochik、uh, among you know other designers. A new way of presenting、uh, diamonds, but、uh, baguettes. In, you know, it be, become you know particularly popular in the last you know、uh, couple of seasons.、Uh, at times, in combination with round, but baguettes is a cut that was not as appreciated as it is now, and is extremely popular. And we can see、uh, actually continuing to be. 好，在这个部分，大家看到的这些设计，其实是有一些像未来主义的风格，他们的宝啊、呃，钻石的切割的方式也是不一样，然后排列组合的方式也不一样，非常的闪耀，但是同时它又有代表了它的抽象的意义啊。Uh, OK， 宝拉 ，Thank you for your presentation. It's now it's um、uh, I will present the few slides. In Chinese, yeah. Ah,、uh, 那那个在线的那个中国的那个呃朋友们，大家好。刚才包拉就是为大家分享了两零二一年的四个方向的设计方向。第一个就是异性啊、呃、艺术行动主义，第二个就是数码的智啊、呃、故事里的传说，然后古古老的智慧以及数码法则。那么在我代表，就是我也很荣幸能够加入到这个 Transition 的 Team 里面，我也有做一些调研。那么很荣幸。中国的作品，中国的品牌也被入选在这一本书里面，所以大家看到艺术行动派的那个那件作品，其实是一个九零后的一个呃设计师做的，他用的是啊银跟金特殊的材质组合在一起，然后它是隐藏的秘密的啊一件珠宝。
。那古老的词汇大家可以看到，就是我们宋代美学的代表。谢谢 T T F， 谢谢那个吴风华那个先生，他一直致力于这个古老的美学的传递。那么在故事里、传说里面，大家看到的这个浮雕的作品，来自年轻的设计师。凯利谢，他运用了啊、呃、古老的那个雕啊、呃、浮雕的作品，然后加上了他自己的理解及自己的中国新风尚的艺术的设计，所以这一件作品也是融合了东跟西。那么最后在 digital 的那个数码法则里面，大家看到的是来自中国的啊、呃、钻石品牌那个啊金伯利钻石，他为我们大家演绎了非常典型的未来主义啊、呃、钻石首饰未来主义的啊、呃、宝石的首饰的一个特征。好，下一页 ，next please， next slide。Yes， yes， 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 I'm sorry， I'm sorry， 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 sorry。OK， 那在我们讲到那个，在所有的那个就是调研当中，其实我今天想突出，在中国的设计师或者在中国的市场，其实我们的很多设计师、很多品牌都致力于匠艺文化的传承。所以，无论是 Cindy 曹，无论是年轻的那个马瑞马啊马斯特马，还是 TTF 的那个代表，他们都运用了。啊，我们的彩色宝石运用了新的工艺，比如说是那个中国的呃吉野的那个组呃组合在一起，所以它有东方的元素，也有西方的元素，然后又又表现了我们中国人，我们中国东方的艺术家是如何传承、如何复兴的。所以这些作品其实现在在全球市场上都带有表，它有自己的设计跟创意的地位。Please。好了 ，next 了。那最后我想跟大家分享的就是啊啊，关于就是古法的之美。那在中国，我们2 4 K 的古法金已经从17年、18年到19年变成一个最最热呃热潮。其实。在刚才宝拉的推荐当中，有一点讲到，我们中国的年轻的一代，我们有一个叫 Chinese pride， 就是中国骄傲，所以我们会愿意去 Made in China 这个标签。所以，而古法金2 0 K 的古法金，的古法金就是 Made in China 这个标签的标志性产品。那今天展示给大家的作品，只是。几千件、几万件当中的一种，这些工艺用到了中国传统的黄金的制造工艺。中国五千年历史里面，黄金的古老工艺从双周就开始，一直到现在。而我们现在的工匠能够去把它以前的工艺能够传承，能够啊、呃，能够再再教会下一代。所以这就是一个啊、呃、文化的传承。所以珠宝首饰它不仅仅是工艺的啊、呃、传承，同时也是中国的文化的传承。所以这个部分。虽然没有入选啊，那个就是宝拉所做的 Trend Book 啊，两零二一年，但是我想古法金就是我们最最骄傲的部分。OK 啊、uh, ，Yeah， So next slide。那我做一个小小的总结，就是在2021年甚至之后，因为也因为2 0 2啊2 0 2二两零当下2020年，我们发生了一些特别的事情，所以我们现在可以看到很多的两极分化，就是我们有大工业生产的东西，也有手工制作的，所以 mass production 啊、uh, combination mass production and 啊、uh, handmade jewelry， 所以在这个市场上，这个部分是还有啊。Uh, 就是多元化的那个 d i e s i f i c a t i o n 那我们所有的设计师可以做 one piece 啊、uh, ，啊 one kind of piece 的作品，也可以设计为。啊、uh, ，fashion accessory， 所以就是从啊、uh, 从入门一直到最 high jewelry， 在中国市场都能呈现。那了，当然最后就是复兴跟我们传承，是我们中国啊、uh, 珠宝行业的人所有的使命。那这就是我想再加在。包拉今天在讲的 presentation 里面，我希望也能够让全球看到我们中国的骄傲。Thank you, Bala. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, before we 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 go to Q and A, a very important note for everybody. We have uh, actually uh, launched a special uh, discount for everyone that attended today. This is only, of course, an extract of our Trend Book 2021. You can go online and purchase either a digital version of the book, or the, the hard copy book is a luxury publication. The code is T as in Trend Book and B as in Book. TB 2021. I repeat, T as in Trend, B as in Book 2021. It will last for five days from today until May 31st, and it will give you 25% discount on our pro on this particular publication. 
I, I just is just a, a technical note. Uh, you can take it back, uh, David. Actually. Thank you so much, Paola. That was a great presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Helen. Um, we'd like to move to Q&A, so please do put your questions on the chat uh, room right now and we can pick those up. I've, I've already seen a question from uh, Sata Maturi, the designer, we'll go to in a minute. But uh, just one question, if I may, Paola, first. Um, when you created the Trend Book 2021, that was before, as you yourself pointed out, before the onset of coronavirus and the COVID-19. Would you say that the impact of COVID-19 has been, if anything, to accelerate some of those key trends that you identified for 2021? Well, yes, we are. I mean, yes, it happened. I mean, it's like, I don't think we are prophets. I mean, we are not, we are just analysts. We collected information, we analyzed the information and we made projections. And in the projection, you know, everything was already happening. What is incredible is that what was for few, I mean, until now, this information were only uh, interesting for like some of the enlightened company or more like, you know, say, I would say, the more, uh, let's say, focused and concentrated companies, designers. Now, everyone has to focus on these changes. And if they don't, unfortunately, the, their businesses will strongly suffer and is already suffering. So everyone from an individual level to a professional level, to a company level, to an organization, an institution, these what we call it sentiment, consumer sentiment, social cultural shift are so relevant that if we don't implement all the new values and therefore needs of consumers, we're out of business. So. I honestly was impressed myself by reading, going back to the trend book, how many things we have highlighted already. And not because, I, I mean, we're not, we are not, very often people are saying, you are predicting. We're not predicting. We are not like, you know, I'm not an astrologist. We are, we are analysts. We collect information, we make production, and, and at the end of the day, we are basically con uh, connecting the dots. Now, the tricky part is, how are we going to implement tangible values, let's say consumer emotion, into a production cycle of the company from, again, uh, coming up with a new business strategy and implement it to our daily life? That's the, that's the alchemy, or let's say the translation, where maybe the industry needs help, and I hope that in our little humble way, will be able to help. Okay, thank you very much. So let's go straight on to the question. So we have a question from Sata Matori, who is a jewelry designer whom I saw at Couture Show, I remember last year. And she asks, can one fuse the trends together? Uh, Sata says, I am completing work on my new collection and it seems we have a fusion of artivism and ancient wisdom. Paula. First of all, I thank Sata because I'm following your work and actually I'll be, I'm actually, I want to announce that I will be launching a project online about emerging design movements in different parts of the world. That includes Africa, India, China, Korea, uh, Thailand, South America. And, you know, but not also, also like, in, let's, I would say in the center, in, in more in the, um, let's say, Western countries. Uh, but of course, Satya, I mean, it's like, what we do is we, we bring information. We are not telling how you have to design your collections. What we're doing is we are bringing information to the table. We are organizing market and, and again, consumer sentiment are in, let's say, clusters. And then it's up to the professional, the designer, the organization to basically um, interpret this information for, is, for expressing their own, their own needs, creativity, or business vision. Okay, thank you. Um, this next question I'd, I'd like to direct to both of you, to Paola and then to Helen. Uh, and this is a question from uh, Guillermo Trementoccio, who asks, um, uh, thanks very much for the excellent presentation. I'd like to know your opinion about post-COVID-19 consumption behavior. He goes on to say, uh, do you believe 
that consumers will be more likely to buy with the thought that beauty and quality will be the most important factors, regardless of whether it's high jewellery or plated jewellery. So Paola first, and then Helen, uh, please. Of course, I mean, we, we, we talked about how, you know, in, you know, during Art Nouveau, but even in other parts of, you know, historical times, um, material were like, were like, let's say, medium to express creativity. Um, I think that today, more than ever, um, society is interested in the, you know, the, the, the value, you know, the, 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 the magic of the piece. Um, and so it doesn't matter if it's a shell with diamond, you know, or, or something else. Uh, of course, you know, it's like, listen, we are in the fine jewelry business. I can't say that, you know, uh, gold is not going to be purchased in certain countries more than other 24K or 18K. Um, but I would say that there are some people who still go to jewelry as an investment based on the culture. It could be the Middle East, it could be India, it could be China, it could be even like South America. It doesn't matter. But also, it, still everywhere in the world people is looking for creativity but also self-expression so whatever helps to to express yourself your your own identity i think people is embracing and this is not the time to talk about it but you know there is all this demographic and psychographic from gen z to uh, gen uh, the baby boomers or gen x that's very relevant how each generation of psychographic are leaving jewelry, are assimilating jewelry, but more than the word jewelry, expressing ourselves through visual codes. It could be a necklace, could be a ring, could be a tattoo, or could be the way your phones, you know, looks. Helen. Okay, Debbie, I want to share my observation about Chinese consumers' uh, three dimension on the gold jewelry, the uh, the value of the uh, of the jewelry. The first one, yes, they put, uh, they treat the jewelry as the daily accessory. So that's the personal express, the statement of the uh, your life the style. The second layer is about the, the value or invest value of the jewelry, uh, combination gold, precious stones, diamond. Yeah, so that's the value, uh, uh, very concentrate. So the third layer is about the, the heritage, about the, uh, 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 like the collective for the, for the family, uh, iron room. Yeah. So that's the traditional habit by the Chinese people, Chinese family. They will put the, the jewelry as their treasury box for generation to generation. So that's why jewelry is the uh, uh, always uh, treated by the Chinese consumer as the valuable stuff. Okay, thank you very much. We have a question from Evgenia Pukeva, who says, um, talking about nature, and, and that of course is the heightened sensitivity now to nature and to environmentalism, are materials like bird feathers, animal skin, and so forth, going to disappear from jewelry design? Uh, I think that would be interesting for both of you. So, um, Paola first, and then Helen. I don't understand what is, I mean, you mean that they are disappearing? Feathers are disappearing from jewelry, and skin is, I never heard of skin, I mean, if it's skin textures, I don't think so because honestly, I mean, I don't, I never saw, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, I don't know, jewelry, skin, uh, skin in jewelry. Maybe it's talking about leather. If it's leather, there are like simulated leather, there are like, you know, as recycled material uh, that they are simulating, you know, animal skins. I, I see that. Uh, of course, if she's talking about, you know, being more aware and sensitive about the animals, of course I agree. But this is something that has been happening for a while. Um, and, uh, and I think that in general, I think in particular designers that they're very sensitive people, that they are, more, they are almost poets you know, of images and, 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 and visuals, 
they are very you know sensitive about the environment and responsible and sustainable so i would say that they maybe they will not disappear they be maybe simulated in alternative material they will be man-made in other ways and like you know humans always did i think we have simulated beautiful like listen they have simulated diamonds they did lab grown diamonds i mean it's like if humans were able to take a seed of a diamond and reproduce a diamond even though it takes thousands of years to have a natural diamonds and now they're doing in a lab maybe they can do also some other alternative material as long we are transparent in every material is being produced either it's cultured pearls or a lab grown diamond or a recycled material that is simulating leather or a fur whatever it is as long as it's clear and transparent everything goes honestly this is this is what i think Helen. Mm, I have no other comment for for this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's we'll, we'll go on to uh, a question from uh, Tajasa Malalan, um, who asks, um, "What advice can you give to young jewelry designers um, who are looking to start off presenting their own jewelry so that they can reach the international market? And also, what advice about the kind of platforms they should use to reach out to those markets?" Uh, Paula. Well. I think it could not be a better time in history than now. I mean, it's like, I think that, especially for what we call natives, meaning young designer that grew up with technology, like I didn't, I didn't grow up with technology because I'm Gen X, I'm in the 45, 55 end of society. So when I grew up, we had, you know, TVs and regular phones, and only later in the 90s, you know, we started having mobile phones. So people that were born in the early 2000 uh, or late 90s, I mean, they grew up with all of it. So what is my advice? Um, well, I would say that you have to study. I'm not going to say just be creative and be online because it's too easy and I don't believe in easy. So I believe that, you know, when easy comes, easy go, usually. I mean, it's like some people get lucky. But I think it's important to study, to know the craft, to know exactly, to have a vision, uh, having a good sense of either design of industrial vision and jewelry making is important. Um, do your own home sir, uh, homework, meaning look at what, you know, what incredible designers are around and don't copy because I'm sure you have your own identity, believe in yourself. There is a lot of work, but then just be online and, and look at the best designers and the best makers and the best, what I call emotional, actually experience makers. Those that they are very good online in terms of design, product, and the way they, they propose their product online. So there are some masters that they're doing it on, online. So look at the masters and try to steal the methodology, not the design DNA, not the way they're doing it, but try to see how the masters are doing it well and take it to a personal level. And hopefully, if you're persistent enough, uh, you know, you'll succeed. Helen, do you have any comments? Uh, I have only one. That's the top of mind is to be passion. If you have passion, you will be have the chance to be success in the future. So um, we're, we're coming very close to wrapping up now. Yeah, I think that for the young general, uh, for young design, you should keep your passion to your jewelry design. Not okay. only treat you like the job, that's your uh, your hobby. Also, you are you are the future. So keep your uh, passion to for the uh, for the jewelry design. Right. So we're coming close to wrapping up the webinar now because we're, we're a little bit over time, but there was such a strong flow of questions that we've, uh, I think it was worth going into them. Uh, there is a question from uh, Vriti Jadwani uh, as we wrap up, um, who noted how that you made a few references in your presentation to 1960s design. Um, and Vriti is asking, um, are we looking at a similar design language to the 1960s to be back in fashion into 2021 plus 
like Riti is, uh, uh, is asking and me uh, going back to my reference, I don't like the word back. There is no back. Things are not coming back. There are the, you know, cultural references. There are cultural and, and historical references. They might be inspirational for today and tomorrow, but there is no going back or coming back. The past is not coming back. Maybe there are some design elements that could be color, that could be shapes, that could be little design details that will be enhanced and completely transformed to be in the 2020 onward. We're not going back. So my advice to any designers, that especially the good ones, that they are researching and they are exploring design development and history and fashion, to kind of detect this element that can be relevant and they're appealing to nowadays and what is and what makes them successful, what, what will make them su successful is the emotional connection. It's like, is it, is it going to echo something that will be really related to, I don't know, uh, civil rights? Is it going to, I don't know, enhance women's beauty? Is it going to like a modern way of being, you know, beautiful today, which is not about being classical and, you know, pretty, but maybe imperfection is the new beauty. Um, maybe it's not about doing things matchy matchy, but, you know, so we have to take this element and take it to present time. It's not reproducing the past. So if I can, I hope I reply to her. Um, but again, we're never going back. We're taking inspiration from one particular time and we take it forward. And this, remember that 60s, they start from 1960 and they end to the 70s. So it's a decade. Within the decade, there are many, there are shifting and evolution. So it's important that within that decade, you understand what was the evolution. And the evolution may change also based on local geography. It's not the same. What happened in India was not the same in Europe. What happened in North America was not the same. Maybe it was similar, but was different. So it's very important. This is a wonderful personal uh, research that you do also on a cultural level. And so when you get into a design exploration, it becomes kind of a, a journey within yourself and culture. Uh, so that's that. Um, Paolo, a few people are asking how they can replay this webinar. Some people have come in a bit late. Uh, well, explain. No, no, no. That's a good point. Now, number one, I'd like to address it. This was a special session to our friends in China. Last time, last like two weeks ago, we had two sessions, one in Italian and one in English. Unfortunately, we are not going to be speaking 20,000 languages. Usually our sessions are mainly in English only. Unfortunately, I wish I could speak 20,000 languages, I don't. Today, we, ha we ch of course, we celebrated China, and even though it's difficult for them to join because of, you know, technology limitation, um, but people can look at this seminar going back on trendvisionforecasting.com, uh, and we're going to be on YouTube, so just follow the link, and there's going to be description about how to see. We already have two webinars online, uh, two webinars online, I'm sorry, and then we have another one coming up, which we will be sharing, uh, right, David? Yeah, so essentially the expectations, the, the next webinar will be on the 8th of June, and it will be looking at the trend, a preview uh, to the trend book 2022 plus, and that will be definitely incorporating elements uh, surrounding the coronavirus pandemic and how it's affected creativity during the lockdown and new ways of thinking. Uh, Trend Vision will be launching a series of web webinars in the coming uh, weeks, uh, looking forward at various aspects of changing consumer culture in the run-up to the September 2020 edition of Vicenza Oro. Um, I'd just like to thank the partners of Trend Vision again, uh, Shenzhen Jewelry Museum and Harper's Bazaar China, uh, for their uh, collaboration with us in creating this webinar today. I hope very much you've enjoyed it. I'll write it up a, a wrap-up article now for Julia Outlook, so watch out for that. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to Paula and to Helen. Uh, we've uh, enjoyed your time. Thanks so much and have a fantastic day. Stay safe. Thank you, David. Thank Ciao. you. Ciao. Thank you, everybody. Ciao. Thank you, everybody. Bye.